Okay then FTO folks The time for neglect has come to an end Yes I know I've done lots of BMW videos recently And yes I do love my BMW But the FTO is not forgotten She's actually sitting behind me here right now With the cover on her As some of you may know, some of you might not know She has kind of become Natalie's little track car She doesn't really come out of the garage that much anymore And since we did the Brands Hatch track day back in December We've not really done very much to her Nat's going to drive her in a couple of weeks time I think Up to West Brom So we had a problem with the ball joint I fixed that That was basically a ball joint that wasn't sitting in the arm correctly The knurling had given way a little bit long story short cut the spots of weld ball joints fine car's working but yeah it's not been on the road although we don't have a lot to do you know what I'm like I like making fun for myself if you've watched the channel before you'll know that we had another track car that was supposed to be a track car that I ended up making a cock up on and it went in the bin but we didn't chuck everything away we kept an LSD gearbox and that LSD gearbox is an unknown quantity but it's something we'd like to put on the track car for obvious reasons now before you all scream at me going ah oh, man it's 20 year old LSD gearbox it ain't gonna work probably not but I actually think the one in the FTO itself has got a lot of play in it and I'm not 100% confident in the box itself so why not take apart the LSD gearbox mm. have a little look at the gubbins inside see if there's any bearings that have got play in and we can swap them out before we put it into the track car and call it a day what I'm going to start doing at this point in time today is doing exactly what I've said. I'm going to take apart the gearbox, I'm going to have a look inside it, I'm going to check it for play, I'm going to clean things up, and then I'm going to reassemble the gearbox. Yes, it's going to be a bit of a complicated one, and I'm going to have some help doing this. Now, before I start the video, I want to get into what I'm actually going to use to help me. So, a lot of you will have seen the FTO manual before. There are quite a few people out there which slate the FTO manual, and I believe that that's possibly because of the way the information is presented. It's not that easy to follow if you don't know what you're looking at. So, before we get started tearing apart the gearbox, which is, by the way, just here on the bench next to me, I'm going to show you a little bit about the FTO manual. So, let me get my camera position here so I can get in and show you this. I've cut out of the manual in the form of a PDF a bunch of pages which just concern the um, gearbox, manual from just main gearbox and taking it apart. So with the FTO manual you basically are presented with these different sections which look something like this. This is the whole section I'm going to be reading through and then at the top of it it will give you a general information layout so it shows you all the details of the different parts, give you the description on a basic level of what they all are and where they are inside the box and then it starts to move into all your spec tables. Now in here it's very fast and by the way, I don't know if I'm going to get done for copyright on this. If I am, I'm really sorry, folks. I don't mean any maliciousness, but this seems readily available out there on the internet, so I hope I'm not going to get in trouble for sharing it. Yes, so as you can see here, one of the things I'm going to be focusing on are these play specifications that you've got to use and I'm obviously going to go through all the different repair steps that I've got, it gives you everything in here guys, I mean it gives you all the different snap ring adjustments, different types of snap rings, part numbers, the information is rich, it just is not that sort of counterintuitive, sorry, it is counterintuitive how you go about using it. The way the whole manual works in this part as well is it's laid out like you're seeing me flick through here where you've got all the specs, then you get the special tools you're going to require to do the job with, and then if you keep scrolling down, you're going to get into the actual starting of the, the process. Now, you're presented with each different section has a disassembly picture, something like this. What you're seeing here is the transmission main first disassembly section. So as you can see here, it gives you you an order numerically of what you need to remove. Number one is remove the brackets as you can see, number two is remove the gear shift linkage and so on and so forth. So you then come down and you'll get an area like this that gives you disassembly steps. It tells you as I've just been describing there all the different things and what order you're supposed to remove them in. That's important guys, that's what you want to follow. Don't start removing the backup lamp switch before the roll stopper bracket. It then also gives you these small um, letters which correspond to areas of detail that you need to follow and that's the key to using the manual guys now I think the arrows inwards are saying you want to do something before you remove something the arrows pointing outwards I believe are afterwards let's just follow that through so let's see section 4 select lever says refer to section K for details so we'll ignore that picture right now and we'll ignore that picture right now and we'll keep scrolling down and here you begin to get the information stuff so we scroll all the way down to where section K is here we go select lever installation so this is saying before it's installed 
Apply grease to the control shaft sliding portion of the select lever shoe. It tells you what grease to use, where to put the grease, and that's giving you the detail that it requires you to follow through. Again, section J there is regarding speedometer gear installation. Before you do the speedometer gear installation, the arrows are pointing inwards, you want to apply transmission oil to the o-ring of the speedometer gear. It really does hold your hand and gives you everything you could possibly require to go and do this operation. So that's all I'm really going to go into with regards to the manual. I'm going to be following through that, making sure I don't miss anything, making sure I do things in order. I'm going to switch over to the head cam so you can see what I can see, because I think it's a much better way of actually giving you a point of view of what I'm doing with the gearbox. You'll see how many times then I refer over to the old manual and you'll see me start to take apart the gearbox. So give me a couple of seconds, we'll stick that on and we'll go for it. Right, okay guys, so we're back in the game. So if we go do just quickly over to the manual, I basically know that the first step here is to remove the bracketry from the outside of the engine, but let's do this properly. So here is your LSD option gearbox from the 1996 Mitsubishi FTO. This is not the GVPR gearbox. I believe they're slightly different in design. This is a if I'm right in saying, hopefully Natalie won't castrate me for this. This is a viscous LSD. That's part of the reason why I alluded to the point that it may not work. As I said, it's a completely unknown quantity. So the first thing I'm actually going to do before we get started in here is I'm going to get out this release bearing and the clutch arm, which is completely loose. You can see I've had a bit of a cleanup of this gearbox already, but I've not really gone crazy with it. Now this is the old release bearing. If you can hear that, you're going to hear that it's not in the best of shape and spins fairly freely. Your clutch arm in an FTO is solid iron, which is rather nice to see. So any of you that are familiar with gearboxes, this will be teaching you to suck eggs, but this is called your input shaft. That's where the engine inputs drive into the transmission. And then behind that cover just there is what's called the output shaft that then leads into the differential, which sits around about here in the case that turns the two axles that then by any chance turn the wheels. So although they look really really complicated and yes they are quite crazy technology inside they're essentially just a box of gears which mesh together and give you the different drive aspects of the car so over here on the left hand side you can see the speedo drive let's pull the connector off for that because i don't think we're going to need that and then up here we have all the different selection arms so we have a, a arm that pulls the selector arm in and out of the gearbox and then once you've done that, that allows you then to move the gears either way. So this is essentially the same sort of process that you get when you move the stick left and right. That's giving you that option there. So this would be in neutral here. And then if I pull the gear arm right out, that's going to give me reverse, I believe. And all the other forward gears, right? Don't quote me on some of the gears there, guys. So I'm not entirely sure which one's set which. It's always easier when you've got the stick in your hand. Uh, this thing here is a breather pipe. That can come off just now anyway, because we don't need to use that right now. All that does is allow air to come out of the gearbox, because obviously as things heat up inside here, the air expands and it needs to let some of that out. Over here, we have the reverse light switch. Any of you that have got an FTO will probably have had one of these fail on you at some point in the past. Uh, this is a very, very basic switch, which is just a, it's a non-latching switch that sits inside the gearbox gearbox we'll pull that out in a minute i'll show you in more detail over here is where some of the bracketry mounts and then if i turn the gearbox on its end you'll see there's a ceiling cap plug there's a bottom cover here and there is some bolts on the outside here which are related to the reverse idler gear we'll come to that again in a little bit later on as well for those of you who may be draining the gearbox oil in an fto it might be useful for you to know that this is the drain plug here stands to reason it sits at the bottom of the gearbox housing and allows you to drain the gearbox oil you can see it's loose here because i've already emptied this gearbox of oil we leave that in there right now it doesn't need to come out for the actual operation of opening up the gearbox let's get started guys as we said first thing we're going to do it is a little bit dark on this side is we're going to pull these brackets it's off so we've got two big bolts in these brackets i believe they're 17 mils let's just check that yep they look like they are and i'm not gonna mess around i'm gonna use the breaker bar there's one bolt off now to obviously take apart the gearbox itself i don't have to do this um but we're gonna put it in the car and the car's already got some of these on so I will take these off just now and I might think about giving them a little clean up. Not really sure, we'll see. And as I said, we're following the steps in the manual. So apart from the one that I've broken the rule on already, the little breather valve, I'm gonna try and do this as per Mitsubishi intent. We'll spin around. Doesn't weigh a lot guys, it's maybe about what? 15 or 20 kilos, something like that. Right, so that's the third bolt we've got coming out. So that's the bracketry hardware removed from the outside of the box. 
before I start taking this apart, one of the reasons I'm taking it apart is because I'd like to look and see what the play is like on this input shaft. So, this is your input shaft. There is a tiny amount of play in the bearing there that you can just about hear. If I get the camera really close and get the microphone up there. Now that's fairly minor, okay? I'm quite happy with that actually, but I'm not going to just leave it at that. The other play we want to look for is end play or in and out play. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lift up and push down on the input shaft. And again, you can hear there's a tiny amount of play in there. Okay. These things, these things are what cause whining in gearboxes. Uh, it accelerates the wear in the gearbox if things are not bound together properly. But again, you don't want them too tight because if you have them too tight, you're going to end up with again accelerated wear. So I'm fairly comfortable. There is a tiny bit of play, but it's not dramatic. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get inside the gearbox and I'm going to use shims, not shims, sorry, feeler gauges to actually check that amount of play. And if it's within the spec in the manual, I'm not going to touch it, I'm going to leave it alone guys. Right, so let's move forwards with the actual disassembly. So, the manual says we want to remove next the insulator washer from the gear shifter um, uh, linkage bracket, which is just here. Now as you can see, that's not on this gearbox anymore. Neither is part number three, uh, which is this little bad boy just on the uh, the manual here. Uh, that's because they were removed previously. I believe if I'm right in saying they actually bolt into these two bolt holes just here and here. So they're gone, they're out the way. Section number four, let's move up there so you can see the whole picture, is this angular bracket just here. So. What we want to do is we want to undo this nut on the end of this angular bracket and start to remove the select lever. Now, as you heard me talking earlier on, uh, the select lever itself wants grease on it before it goes back in. Actually, we'll remove the nut. No, we won't remove the nut from here. Sorry, let me not misguide you. We're going to remove the two bolts, which are just underneath here. Next two bolts look to my eyes like they are 12 mils. Yes, they certainly are. We use the brute force method again. Stick the spanner on. I use old Cheap's Wix spanners. There we go, guys. Give a little knock. Oh, that one was a bit loose. That's rather interesting, isn't it, guys? Finger tight. Hmm. Has it been off in the past? Hmm, don't know. Not by me. I can tell you that for sure. Shift lever is a common out. This is actually two parts here. There's the one main lever, which if I get the camera around, you'll see there's like a nylon bush in there, which sits inside that groove. When I remove this shift lever out of the way, you'll see its operation is such that it simply moves this in and out like so. Okay, so not too difficult. That's again got nylon bushes. Has it got play? A little bit. I'm not too worried about that, I don't think, because its main operation is to move in this rotation, not up and down and not sort of angular at any point. So I'll leave that like that. Now, I'm going to start doing the good old put the bolts back where you got them from thing but I may not continue that. It depends if they get in the way or not, guys. Right, so next thing on the uh, old instructions here is to remove the speedo gear. Now that's dead easy. That's a little 10 millimeter bolt, which is just under here. And the whole thing should just pull out. So let's grab a, a 10 mil socket for that one. We'll use a long nose on this, why not? Let's keep it, let's keep it interesting. That need no taps, obviously. It's just a plastic body, this folks. So I don't know the exact torque spec on that, but that is not tight. You know, I think that looks like it's about 20 Newton meters, maybe. And it looks like there's no Loctite on that. The white you can see at the end there is a bit of aluminium corrosion. So let's grab the speedo gear and gently ease her up and out. If she doesn't want to come, we might need to persuade her with a screwdriver. Oh, there we go, out she comes. So there's your speedo drive. As you can see, drive in here, sits inside the diff, and there will probably be a plastic gear attached to the diff, which actually engages this speedo drive, does the spinning motion, and off you go. Give her a little clean up of the cloth, so you can actually see the o-ring that they were talking about putting grease on before you reassemble. Now, that's not rocket science, folks. Any of you which have put o-rings in anything before, if it's an oily uh, thing that you're going to put the uh, o-ring on, you always want to use a nice bit of clean oil on so that the o-ring stops it from binding inside the hole and it makes sure that that o-ring seals perfectly in the future. 101 with o-rings, guys. Right, so there we go. I'll put that little bolt back in there just for now. Now, the one thing I want to do at this point 
is I don't want any crud really going down inside that hole there. So I'm going to get in the hole, I'm going to give it a wipe out. And then whilst I've got the cloth in there, I'm going to take a very small wire brush and I'm just going to clean around that hole. I could have done this before, but the speedo drive is in the way. You should be able to just about make out. I don't know if you can see that in there. In there, there is a very small plastic gear, which does the job of turning the speedo drive. So speed up gear has come out. The backup lamp switch or the reverse light switch is going to be next. Oh yeah, that'll do. Right, again, my word, that was loose, man. I think actually I may have taken it out to check that. So that was a 24mm spanner there to undo. It just simply screws out. There's nothing special about it, folks. It's basically a tiny little ball which makes contact inside and either breaks or makes continuity with two plugs that you might be able to make out just at the bottom there. And I think I've got a feeling that this one is actually knackered. So... Nah, that's a dead one. So I'm actually going to bin that reverse light switch. We won't be using that again because that will give us no reversing light. Um, that's a bit of a shame, but that's okay because we can swap the one over from the gearbox that's in the F2 right now. Okay, so where are we at? We've done backup lamp switch. Number seven, we want to take the gasket off for the backup lamp switch. Oh, there it is. By me, yeah, don't forget that. Right, the next point here is his poppet spring. Number eight three bolts in the engine mount and then we have these three nuts here now it's telling me to remove number eight which is the poppet spring and it tells me there's 32 newton meters in torque so the only problem you do have is the actual pictures are not the best thing in the world now this will be part of the locking mechanism that holds the two cases together believe it or not there we are we have exactly what i thought it's basically uh, like an indent oh i would have expected that to push in yes it does there we are, that's basically a ball bearing contained within what looks like a bolt but it's essentially not really a bolt, it's more like a tube with a spring behind it. So we'll pop him off to the side and he has to stay clean. So we'll need to make sure that that stays like that. Once again this hole here wants to stay clean. I think I've got maybe a rubber cap that I can pop in there, yep I've got something like that. Now obviously if you don't have something like I've got here kicking about, Anything will do, I would suggest you use something like a piece of tape over the hole or maybe a chunk of blue tack in there might work or a chunk of plasticine in there might work. You know you mess about with the gearbox guys, you don't want things dropping in there you don't want in there. So we'll just seal them up like that right now and make sure no crap gets in there. Obviously if your gearbox is immaculately clean, you don't have to worry as much as I am. You know I'm trying to be a wee bit careful here because as you can see I've got all kinds of crud and dust on this gearbox and I really don't want that going inside the case because if I'm honest I don't want the flap of having to wash the case out, clean out all the old ATF, put it all back together again. So I'm going to try and do this as clean as possible so that we, uh, I can just reassemble it. Right, so the last thing we had there was the gasket on that poppet spring. I pulled that off with it. You can see there, these are basically, these are basically just aluminium washers, folks. Uh, the same sort of thing as your copper washers, uh, but made of aluminium. So that's that first section done. Okay, easy peasy bit. The next section starts to get a little bit more fruity, and this is the point I'd like to get at today before I put it on pause and go and have a lunch. So we're going to begin here by number 10, which is just there, which is another interlocking plate bolt, and then we'll proceed forwards. So, taking a look at the gearbox, we're we're looking at the bolt which sits I believe just here yes so we have the hole selector arm mechanism here which needs to come out obviously now I am going to stop here just for a second I'm going to pull this bracket off guys because that bracket shouldn't really be on there I don't think at this point it doesn't seem to be on the uh, pictures That's right so interlock plate bolt comes out this will probably serve a function of locking this whole mechanism in place and I would say looking at the shape of that bolt that might confirm that to me it has this tip on it now that tip looks to my eyes like it goes in something inside the gearbox but we're going to find that out in just a moment so as you know we always want to make sure we keep things where we put them this has to come out so we've got to leave that out so number 11 where are we number 11 uh, number 11 is going to be the washer number 12 is the control housing itself so i believe now looking at what's going on here we can actually undo the four 18 millimeter 12 mil bolts just get them undone a wee bit and then we can just spin them out of the old socket handle right i would expect that this is going to have sealant on it and i expect that because if you look at this cover here 
you can see a line of sealant which has been squished out so this isn't going to come out easily it's going to want a little bit of persuasion and for that purpose it seems to my eyes looking at it like they've given you some little areas to persuade it with so before we go too far here I'm going to actually clean this one off because this is going to leave a large gaping hole inside the gearbox case and for the reasons I've been harking on about throughout the video I don't want loads of rubbish going in there so let's do a bit of that we've got a large hole where a reverse light switch used to be so as you can see See, there is a lip here and there's a lip here and that is designed for the purposes of giving you something to lever the damn thing off with let's get in here with a cold chisel and I'm just going to gently tap a couple of times and I'm going to come around here and gently tap a couple of times do it evenly folks okay I don't know what's inside here neither do you at this point it's probably got dowel pins which hold it on nice and straight and we want to make sure yep that it comes out nice and straight as well so we'll lift the whole mechanism out like it does and make sure we don't drop the stuff off the bottom of it there you have it so as i said there's one pin here one pin here which locate into the housing here and here the four bolts that hold it on and a lovely bit of smeared gasket sealant it tells you that the next thing you've got to remove is a neutral return spring which is this thing here Okay, if you look at that in some detail, that is a sprung device. It's got a spring inside it, and that's what gives you the feeling of neutral. So let's leave him on the shaft that way around, that way I know which way it's supposed to be inputted. And let's note rather interestingly that there's a bit of sealant on there, which I reckon maybe may just be a cock up from the factory. Not sure about that though, guys. Okay, so this assembly, I'd rather like to keep it as it is standing vertically so that's what we shall do right now we'll pop him over there at this point we can now begin to see inside the gearbox you can begin to see the shift fox down in there you can see the needle roller bearing that the nose of this part here sits in and then we can begin to see some of the actual gears oh we're getting exciting folks 14 is the bottom cover so let's turn her on her nose so we have this bottom cover here this is a lovely opportunity to take this cover and clean it up. As you can see, they go a little bit rusty and they don't look particularly pretty. And if you get a hole in that cover, it's going to piss all the gearbox oil out. If this cover is in any way, shape or form got a hole in it, it looks like it's going to hole through, get shot of it, get yourself a new cover, get it welded up, do what you've got to do to make sure it's nice and clean. Um, in the moment, ours looks like it's medium. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, seem worse. So I'd say again, these are not very tight folks, okay? These are probably, even with the uh, extra added 20 years of rust, we're looking at about 20, 25 newton meters, I reckon, for them. Check the manual for the proper torque specs if you want to know it, okay? Uh, this cover is just a flat plate, covers the bottom of the gearbox, uh, and it is sealed on. So what you don't want to do is squish it so damn hard that you poke holes in the sealant and everything then comes apart on you later on. Okay, okay. So there's our six bolts away. And as I've said, you're going to have to break the sealant on this again. So this one, we're going to give a little tap again, but we're going to be nowhere near as brutal, guys. You don't need to be. Uh, that other one was an aluminium housing. This one here is purely a little steel plate. So as you can see, inside where the gearbox oil has been on it, it's lovely and clean. Outside where the sealant's been, I don't know what it is with Mitsubishi sealant, folks, but it has a tendency to want to rot things. So I'm just going to give this a little wipe just now. And we'll get some of that sealant off right now, but we won't go crazy because I'll take the rest of it off when I remove the cover from the actual gearbox. And we'll pop him over here with his six little bolts. Okie dokie. So now we're really getting somewhere. We've got a big massive hole in the top of the gearbox and a big massive hole in the bottom. This is where, if you've had problems with your reverse gear, there is a bit of a bodge fix that you can do where you come in the bottom of the gearbox here I can't remember off the top of my head exactly which one it is but I believe that there is a spring in here somewhere it will actually allow you to remove the stopper which is designed to stop the car going in gear uh, from fourth gear into reverse now that stopper actually causes problems because it gets worn and it fouls on the gear shift and you end up then with a, a car that's really really difficult to get in reverse there is a, there's a fix I can't remember exactly what it is but you go in here and you pull out a spring basically and uh, away you go obviously when you've got the shift levers connected you can move all the uh, your shifter arm out of the way there and you can get in and see things that's not the purpose of this video so we will come to that at a later date ah number 15 reverse idler gear bolt uh, that is the right hand most bolt out of these two bolts just here guys so if you have a little look uh, you can see the oil fill plug 
we said this is the oil drain before this is the oil fill plug leave that it doesn't need to come out and um, the reverse idler bolt though it does have to and it's a 14 millimeter bolt which requires a small tap and she should come out nice and easily now what's going to happen here is this whole assembly with the reverse idler on it should then be loose and come away so i'm just going to put my finger on it and hold it in place i'll get a bit of light in there for you uh, i'm going to remove the bolt completely and then this entire reverse idler gear i believe should if we got everything in the right place pop upwards and outwards there we are so as you saw there what happens is it basically pull the the nut hole next towards you that's where your bolt previously was give it a little wiggle and push it this way towards the front of the the bell housing and then lift that gear out now we're gonna have a quick inspection of this gear whilst we're in here and I'm looking for any chips on the teeth I'm looking for any abnormal wear in the teeth and I want to check the bearing itself I want to feel for play can't feel any play at all and I can check the shim there on the uh, the uh, snap ring we'll do that later when we check all the shimming now we get to the point where we start dealing with gears guys um, as you know I'm a bit flippant with cleanliness and all the rest of it where you really have to stop being like that and you really need to make sure things are clean is when you're dealing with gearbox parts you don't want grit getting in your gearbox for obvious reasons that would be a disaster and would cause you massive problems so whenever I'm going to take stuff off which includes gears I'm going to see if I can find a nice clean cloth so we now have the reverse idler gear out we're on number 17 number 18 this is where stuff starts to get a bit more juicy number 18 is a plug which is in the back of the box so number 18 ceiling cap now the ceiling cap has a few instructions before what we're going to do with that it's got a before and an after right so as i said to you earlier on there is uh, arrows going out indicate something you've got to do before you remove the the part arrows going inwards are before you put the part back on first thing we'll do we'll tip the gearbox up on its end ceiling cap removal before or during the ceiling cap removal it doesn't tell you information it just shows you the ceiling cap and it shows you that basically what you've got to do is grab a screwdriver and whack it down inside the ceiling cap and pry the thing out there you go okay one ceiling cap uh, as you can see and as i've just discovered you ain't got no hope in getting that back and it's going to have to be replaced at the end unless we can maybe manipulate that out and be real cheap um, but no we'll try and avoid that so ceiling cap is out <sighs> i'm enjoying this guys i love gearboxes like a pig and shit here number 19 interesting is a oil container i'm not entirely sure what that is let's see number 19 transmission case number b and number f okay so we are pretty much there now i would think looking at that that snap ring there is not going to do anything if i just open it up now let's try that briefly no okay so what we're going to have to do here is we are going to have to undo all the transmission case bolts and we're going to pry up on the transmission case like so bah, 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 possibly with some levers um, whilst opening the snap ring and what that will achieve is as i lift the case up the snap ring will stay with the case the gears will be sitting downwards and will come away basically your, your process is as such i want to remove all the bolts which is going to be number 20 i would assume Oh, no, number 20 is actually the ceiling cup inside there. So where the hell did it tell you to remove the bolts? That's really weird. Okay, so here's one flaw with the manual, guys. Uh, the actual case bolts, it just gives you the torque tightening on them. It doesn't give you what number of the process it is to remove them. Number 19 here is to do with the sealant and to do with the snap ring. Uh, number 20 moves straight on to talking about... Um, the ceiling cut there, I believe, number 20. Outer race and spacer for the, the diff bearings. Now that's uh, all the way around here, that sort of thing. So that's interesting they tell you to remove those first. Now we don't have to remove those seals, so let's get in here and get these bolts undone to begin with. What are we looking at there? 14 mils? 12, 13 that one was. This one is 14. And then 15 should be loose. Excellent. Okay, so that's all the bolts loose. Now, first thing I've just noticed there, that is a hole in a casting. 
and that's a bit I don't know what's going on there we'll be having a look at that when we get it apart folks you can use air tools for this if you want to if you want to speed things up they're fairly fairly well put together to be perfectly honest by and large and I'm not seeing a lot of corrosion um, these are 20 year old zinc plated bolts if any of you watch the channel regularly you might know that that's what I do for a living I'm actually working aerospace as a, a cadmium plater and I'm used to seeing cadmium which lasts forever and zinc which doesn't um, it looks to my eyes like Mitsubishi didn't cheap out on the zinc plating on these bolts there's plenty of it on there why do you need it? quick lesson here I enjoy this uh, when you have two dissimilar metals put together in the same environment i.e. steel and aluminium they create an electrolytic cell which builds up electrolytic sorry cell uh, and that creates a corrosive aspect what begins to happen is that aluminium will corrode and it will adhere to the steel that creates the horrible problem that you have with BMW engines where you go and take the gearbox off and the bolts don't want to come out that's also what you're seeing when you see this white substance here this one obviously didn't have as much plating and was more susceptible to corroding away that will cause you lots of problems in the future it looks like by and large the bolts they used, I mean they look pretty fresh man that's amazing mate okay so once we've removed the outer case bolts which are on the outside you need to flip the bell housing round and there are two bolts inside the bell housing let's see if I can get a bit of light on them you can just see them one here and one here now I've actually got a long 14mm socket and got in there and I've unscrewed these already let's just whip them out the rest of the way once we've done that we should be able to pry the case open now in preparation for that I have got myself a pair of snap ring pliers and I'll show you a little trick that I've got you kind of need three hands to do the operation of opening the case itself guys so we'll flip the case up on its end pop them down on the mat and here we go right so we've got a pair of snap ring pliers we need the snap ring open as we remove the gearbox sorry as we remove the housing from the outside of the gearbox so as you can see in here we've got the snap ring nice and open snap ring pliers are keeping it out of that ceiling groove you can just about make that out now when we come to actually remove the case the most important thing I can stress is use the tools that Mitsubishi have given you you'll see here there is a an opening area where you can get a pry tool in there's another one just here there is another one, a third one, round the back here, which is actually just on the corner. So what we want to do is we want to get in each of these pry holes and we want to start to pull the case of the gearbox upwards. Now if you don't have the snap ring pliers in place at this point, it should still lift up, but it will bind and you won't be able to get it completely off. So let's try a large pry bar in on here. There we go. Obviously you're going to have to break the seal of the sealant itself But fairly quickly you should notice that it will start to peel up With a little bit of persuasion, try and keep moving around folks There we go, it's now loose So now I should be able, because of the way the pliers are sitting To just lift this case up and away from the box There we go so here's the money shot folks, there is your FTO gearbox. So I will now drop this the other way around. I'll take the snap ring pliers out of the way and I'll pop that upside down. Now there's your internals of your gearbox. You can see here we have the little bung where I put for the three little indent pins. There's a small bush sitting in the bottom of that one ring there, we can come to that later on. There has been some grinding going on inside that case to clear off all the old flash. Um, I believe we should have a magnet in here somewhere. We have a outer bearing race here for the diff and the inner bearing race here for the diff. So what we'll do is we'll pop the case out the way somewhere nice and safe in the ground for now and we'll have a quick inspection. So that's what your gearbox looks like when you open it up folks. Okay, we have the input shaft on the inside here you can now see the ceiling groove in the bearing there the bearing itself has very little play but there's a shim in the top that's the shim we're going to check on there's another bearing here for the output shaft which has another shim and a snap ring that holds it in the gears themselves will probably lift off as one unit but we'll check the manual before we actually do that 
We have here a magnet which should tell us quite a lot about the state of the gearbox inside. Right, so just before I end this video, because I'm going to call this gearbox opening part one, we now have the box open. I'm going to take out the magnet which is just in there. Uh, what do we need for that? Let's have a small pair of needle nose, granddad's ancient ones. And if we lift the magnet out, we want to look at the state of the magnet and check for metal debris on the magnet. Now, that's a fair amount of metal debris in there. So that would indicate to me that there is some wear going on inside this gearbox which might need to be addressed. The shims look like they might be wearing slightly and possibly the teeth are wearing slightly. So that will need to be cleaned up. That magnet obviously if I take a cloth to that, that's basically like a metal paste guys. Obviously it's gone into a fantastic magnet shape because of the uh, magnetic fields so we'll turn it over and we'll give the other side a quick wipe as well and mainly that is gear oil and sludge so if we get a bit of maintenance fluid in there the magnet itself I think is encapsulated in that little frame so what I would like to do before I put this together, I, I've got an air compressor in the garage, I'm lucky enough to own one of them. I'll give that a blowout and try and get as much of that crud out there as possible. And let's have a quick look at the gears before we call it a day. So an initial look at the gears will give us an idea of the situation behind that, that gunk that we've just seen. Let's turn them around so we can get the lights on them. Now I'm looking again for cracked teeth. I'm also going to look at all the different edges of the gears as I rotate them to see if there's any damage on any of the edges which it doesn't look like there is this is where the reverse idler gear engages and they look actually like they're in fairly good condition there so these are your selector forks around this side so you have the three selection forks here. These are where the indent pins will sit in from the outside of the gearbox casing. So these basically bolt in and pop into these grooves. That's what gives you the, the way the gear is held in place. And the selector forks should allow me to wobble up and down the gears. What I think I may do, let's just check the old uh, instructions. I would say we can remove all of the gears together. So I don't want to actually disassemble the gears as a whole. I would like to remove them as a set. Now I've got a feeling I may have to remove this plate here to actually pull the gears out of the, uh, the case. As I said though, that is us with the gearbox open, ready to inspect and ready to start cleaning up. Uh, we'll start checking the shim sizes, but I'm going to save that for another video because this one's getting a little bit long and we're getting a little bit involved. Um, obviously once we've done that, we've taken the gears out, we can then get the bad boy out, which is the LSD. So before we leave, I will say, uh, you want to try and protect this, you don't want any water getting in here, you don't want any funk getting in here whilst you leave it alone. I'm going to take myself a poly bag, which I think I've got over here. There we go, that's going to protect all the gears from any shit getting in there. And we'll pop them over to the side. There we are. There we are. Okay, so there you go FTO peeps, that is the case removed from the gearbox, we're now ready to start taking the actual gears out and we can really get into inspecting them, that's where stuff begins to get a little bit more technical and a lot more interesting, we can look at the condition of the synchro meshes, we can look at the condition of the individual gears themselves, we can check the condition of the bearings which are situated in the housing at the bottom of the gearbox, we can check all the shim sizes, if you've got any questions or any comments please drop them down below, I'll obviously get back to you as I try to always do with all the comments, hopefully that was fairly standard sort of fare. If you've taken anything apart before, there's not too much to opening the gearbox case up. Um, it's actually testing things and making sure that they've all got the right tolerances, which is the tough bit. So we'll save that for the next video. For now, that's basically it. I told you I wouldn't forget about your FTO peeps. She's still behind me. She's going to be better. She keeps getting better. Keep working on them, guys. That's it for now. See you soon. Pay more.